Rigging and lifting are probably the most enjoyable part of working at height. I've always been intrigued with mechanical advantage systems and how a heavy object can become light and manageable. Mechanical advantage systems, or otherwise known as pulley systems, can be dated all the way back to 1500 BC. This was the first recorded pulley system created by the Sumerians of Mesopotamia. In fact, recent historians suspect pulley systems were even used as far back as during the making of the Egyptian pyramids. Historians also credited Greek mathematician, inventor, astronomer, engineer and physicist Archimedes with the first documented compounded pulley system in the 3rd century BC. Archimedes used a system of compounded pulleys to move a trade ship with 600 passengers onto dry land. Pulley systems are certainly not a new invention, but we only recently started making use of these methods within the telecoms community. Taking into consideration that pulley systems have been around for thousands of years, it saddens me that technicians still used outdated methods to lift and lower telecoms equipment. Huawei is the sponsor of this video, and I hope this video will help you understand how simple it is to implement the correct systems and processes with proper training, SOPs and equipment. My name is Barry Lottering and I've been working in this industry for over a decade. I'm also a Mercita accredited rigging assessor and moderator. So how do we understand mechanical advantage systems? Mechanical advantage systems are a measure of force amplified by using input forces provided through means of pulling by hand, mechanical devices or machine systems. Mechanical advantage systems are not only found in our classical pulley systems, but can also be found through lever system, gear trains such as gearboxes, chain and belt systems such as those used by bicycles. You should also be familiar with the classical block and tackle system. In the telecoms industry, we have broken up rigging and lifting into three major components. One, basic rigging, otherwise known as rope rigging for loads weighing 100 kilograms or less. Two, advanced rigging, otherwise known as mechanical rigging for loads weighing 100 to 500 kilograms. And three, crane lifting for loads above 500 kilograms. So why did we divide rigging and lifting into three major areas based on the weight of the load? Well, mainly it's because of the load limitations of the equipment. During lifting, we use different equipment. Each of these sets of equipment does have its own disadvantages and its own set of advantages. Before we delve into the different lifting methods, we need to understand some of the objects being lifted for each of the categories. Typically, we have two types of lifting methods, doing lifts in a modular format or lifting the equipment into smaller sections such as the brackets, antennas, RRUs and cables on its own. Or we can lift the load in a singular format such as combining the objects on ground level and lifting it all at once. Bear in mind that lifting items one by one is simple with little risk. The big disadvantage is that lifting items one by one is very time consuming. Lifting larger, heavier items such as singular loads will increase the risk of failure, but it will significantly reduce the lifting time on site. So basic lifting are loads 100 kilograms or less. In this method, we use rope access equipment or rope rigging equipment to lift and lower loads. We will typically lift loads such as small dishes, jump balls, RRUs, antenna brackets and large pulleys such as snatch blocks. Advanced rigging are loads weighing 100 kilograms to 500 kilograms. Typically this method are used for singular loads where the whole antenna assembly are rigged on the ground. We then lift the whole item and install it on the tower. This method are also the most popular for the tower builders as they assemble sections of the tower on the ground. The equipment we used are known as lifting tackle and are subject to driven machinery regulations. These requirements are quite strenuous, so be sure you are knowledgeable on why you are making use of advanced lifting techniques. Rope rigging equipment can be visually inspected by a trained gear inspector, whereas lifting tackle must be inspected by a competent lifting tackle inspector or LTI. Lifting machines used in advanced lifting must also be inspected by a competent lifting machine inspector or LMI. Remember, all LMIs must be registered with the Engineering Council of South Africa. Training for basic lifting must be done by a Mercita accredited training provider and must be in accordance with Unit Standard 14706. 
Training for advanced lifting must also be done by a Mercy to accredited training provider and must be done in accordance with Unit Standard 253582. As you will be lifting at height, you will need to ensure you are medically fit to work at height and also have a valid Fall Arrest Level 2 certificate certified to Unit Standard 229995. When you are moving from basic lifting to advanced lifting, you will need to have a foundation of basic lifting certificate before attempting advanced lifting. A good degree of sight experience will also be advised. Technicians often underestimate the complexities associated with rigging and lifting, and for this reason, underestimation frequently results in loads being dropped and also items being dropped on other technicians. The result are almost always a lack of correct equipment. And when they have the equipment, they do not have the correct training. Bad habits are also prevalent when technicians start using pickup trucks or winches on the cars. Remember, the use of cars are strictly forbidden for lifting. Not only as it is a standard for Huawei, but also legislatively, you are not allowed to lift loads if it is not designed for its intended purpose. Be aware that you not only put your team at risk, when using cars, but also your company being reprehended by Huawei. So let's look into team compositions. Team compositions are critical and we will look into the minimum number of persons in a team. Loads up to 100 kilograms must be lifted by a minimum of two riggers. One person being the rigging supervisor and the other the basic rigging technician. Loads between 100 to 500 must be lifted by a team of minimum three riggers one person being the lifting supervisor and certified as an advanced rigger and the other advanced riggers. The final person will typically assist with the assembly of the system and will also rig and control the fly line and must be certified as a basic rigger. Any loads higher than 500 kilograms must be done by a crane or the load must be broken up and lifted in a modular fashion. Following the correct site procedures are also critical for a safe and effective lifting system. Before lifting, ensure to conduct the following administrative tasks. Ensure to always risk assess your lifting operation. Ensure that the equipment used are safe for use and fit for purpose. And lastly, ensure you have a well-designed lifting plan and this plan are communicated with your team before the lifting commences. During your training, you will be taken through the various stages of rigging and lifting. First, you will assemble your lifting system. Then you will lift your load through a dedicated lifting system. Once you have reached your installation area, you will mount the load to the structure. If you are mounting the antenna, ensure to pan the antenna or dish with the lifting equipment still on the load. Once the antenna are in its correct position, ensure you fasten the load to the structure before removing the lifting equipment. Also consider you will need to lower other loads. This will basically be a reverse of the lifting process, but do not underestimate the associated dangers with lowering loads. I often get asked when lifting cannot be done, such as environmental conditions such as high winds. Well, this can be done by using the Beaufort wind force scale, but essentially there is no fixed rule as the conditions will vary. Conditions such as but not limited to the size of the load being lifted or the height to where the load will be lifted to. Remember, the wind speed at the ground level will not be the same as at the top of the tower. A critical part of your lifting system or your lifting equipment or tackle. Equipment are expensive, so make sure to store it in a cool and dry environment. Also critical to your lifting operation are to conduct a structural evaluation. Make sure that the structure's integrity are secure as the forces imposed on the structure during the lifting process are often not calculated correctly. The structure are also anchor points, so ensure that the selection for anchoring are correct and secure. When possible, use a gym pole to assist with going around the telecoms equipment already on the tower. The forces applied are immense and without proper training and equipment specifically built for the task, we can easily overload the equipment without knowing the accidental forces applied. We use mechanical advantage systems every day, from driving our cars, riding our bicycles and even tightening the ropes on the transporting systems on our cars. Rigging are very enjoyable. When you do it correctly, there are no reason for loads being dropped. One thing about driving a car is that other factors can always impose on your own safety. But the risk of loads being dropped can be reduced to zero if all correct mitigation steps are applied correctly. 
I hope this video gives you some really good information and I hope to see you in our next training course.